doing a little video on my progress for my attempt on an end track layout and um, here I am it's a couple weeks in uh, trying to get as much done before summer so let's start here I've got the uh, let's see the red yellow and blue lines uh, these are 24 inch radiuses they come in um, I've only have a six inch overhang here coming out uh, the, I got two inches from the center rail out to the edge here um, in somewhere I read it was uh, you need to, if you have something longer than eight feet so this is eight feet you need to have some way to get from one rail to the other so I use Kato uh, double crossovers I plan on making um, some sort of piece of wood that will go in between to help dis disable them if um, I plan on having each one of the rails as well as some of the other rails I've got here I'll, on separate wire lines so that you can go DC or DCC or you know whatever combination you want and we don't want to cross those power supplies over so I'm going to try to make a couple pieces of wood that will go in between the two switches to prevent any uh, mechanical switching and then these are also um, I'll electrically disconnect them as well so that they can't be electrically um, done. The uh, other thing I want to do is I want to put a kind of like a roadblock here across here. I'll make some sort of roadblock so that those can't switch over accidentally during a show or any other time that you're trying to use DC and DC, a DC on one line and a DCC on the other. And that should work. I've tested it out. I've run a DC and a DCC at the same time unless a train actually crosses when a train crosses that's making the electrical conductivity to connect the two power supplies um, otherwise these switches are working super fun uh, so as we move down the line here I've uh, I'm gonna have a bridge here and um, I'm gonna have a mountain division and that's what this is for we'll talk a little bit more about that later but for my blue line I have a sub blue or kind of like a, a branch blue line. Uh, a couple things I'm thinking about with this, if I'm going to try to step back here, if you look over here to the left is going to be a mountain range. So I've got a tunnel and there's going to be a double bridge here, one for the green line and one green branch and one for the blue branch. So what I'm thinking here is if I keep that line, again, wired separately, we can either connect it to the blue branch or we can bring that line out to the front where maybe kids can control that train because it's going to have a little bridge over here that it can run through. It's going to have this double bridge it's going to run through and a nice tunnel. So it would be really cool for kids to operate a train that's kind of running through there and they can speed it up and slow it down. Um, or we can just run it individually so one of the things that um, if you're looking at this you're probably um, you experienced guys this is my first time ever doing this so I'm still learning but this curve there's a couple curves here that are actually not 18 inches I know that the blue line has the minimum radius of 18 inches um, I'm perfectly fine with these these are 24 inch radiuses that curves coming in and out to pull it out so that I have room for this uh, but um, it's so what I had to do. It's what I had that got stuck with. But I think there's a great opportunity here for kids to be able to do something and have some fun with it. And then we can also run shorter cars. I've tested this line. You can see that I've got the Kato um, double stacks. So and they run nice along that those curves and through there. The two hoppers that are on the back are uh, uh, 70 foot hoppers, 65, 70 foot hoppers and they're managing through the curves pretty well. I tested um, this locomotive, which is a six axle. It doesn't like 12 inch radiuses, so it, it d bombed on them. And I also tested these um, Atlas uh, Trinity hoppers that I have uh, that have the couplers are on the bodies and not on the trucks. The trucks do not turn very well, but I can't even get those through an 18 inch radius. Um, they're fine on 24s, but they don't. They barely like 18. So I don't know if that's the the, the car or the track itself. But that middle track, we can always run shorter cars, and it can just be a loop that can run. Kids can run it. Um, audience can run it from the outside if we want. 
either way it doesn't matter but I thought it would be really cool if I'm going to make mountains to be able to have some sort of locomotive that can go through those tunnels um, so that's kind of why I'm going with it and we'll see what happens so I'm going to have um, uh, so then out coming out of here I've got um, I'm not quite sure whether this is going to be a little bit of a mountain range or I'll make like an aqueduct arc aqueduct that comes around here so you can still see the trains from from this side um, this is definitely going to be cut back a little bit this mountain is not going to come out this far um, I was just trying to get make sure I had enough foam so that I could get this this entrance way or exit way depending on which way they're going here and then same on the back side here um, for the mountain division I'm gonna have a mountain in this space here this mountain is gonna come up here I also have an inner loop, a branch, green branch line that's going to be coming around here. So what's cool is that it's going to be able to come up and around and cross over here, be part of this double bridge. This bridge I'm not quite sure I was going to do. My first idea was that it was going to have, it was going to be one of those double draw bridge. There's a double draw bridge in Oregon called the Iron Bridge, I think it's called, or the Steel Bridge, one or the other. Uh, but I think I messed up in my design, um, plus the fact that it's got to cross four, um, this has got to come out in order for me to move the two tables. They split here. I'm going to have a river down through here with this bridge. Um, I'm not quite exactly sure. Originally, it was going to be here and then this one in the middle, but I'm not sure I have much room. I might be stuck with just putting this one here. Um, we'll see how that goes. Well, that could change next time I do another update. In the back, that big, huge bridge is kind of fun. I, I really like it. It's still in pieces. That's going to be one big unit that comes out. It's going to pull out uh, in order to, again, go across the river and to just uh, take the two halves apart. Um, that's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm pretty excited. That one's going to work really well, I believe. Um, and it's going to connect the two lines. So I've got a another double turnout here so the, the mountain line can go one line all the way out and then one that will come curve around um, through the outside uh, we got another small bridge here where um, the inner loop will, will go across what I do in the center is still up up in the air I'm not quite sure what I want to do um, but I wanted to make sure that trains ran pretty smoothly on their tracks and um, that's kind of my update. I really haven't gotten to the mountain level yet, but hopefully I can get there. Um, greatly appreciate some um, making sure that I'm going with the standards. I'm not missing anything. I think the only standard I have, have uh, kind of ignored was, well, I didn't ignore, but the one standard I couldn't get was this blue branch had to have some 12 inch radiuses through here. Um, Hopefully I was able to keep them as I laid the track. Um, probably my sixth or seventh layout that I've ever made, but my first end track one. So hopefully things are going pretty good. Like I said, I've got, I'm trying to test as many things. I'm hoping to get another um, six axle locomotive that I can test on the inner track um, to see how that runs. Um, but I think one of the things that I've noticed so far is that any you're always going to have some sort of locomotive or cars that are not going to run well in certain places. Um, I have this one, again, like I said, this locomotive doesn't like the 12 inch radius down here. Um, but I have another layout that has really tight curves and I jury rigged this locomotive so it'll def definitely go clockwise. It just won't go counterclockwise without jumping a, tra a track. But um, anyways. So far, everything is, seems to be working in pretty good. Um, I've been able to run some right now. I've got that, that Trent locomotive, a DC locomotive, but like I said, I will wire all. There are basically six lines, the three, the one in the mountain, and then the two branches. All six will be, have, uh, be on different electrical wires, and we can either connect the blues and the blues and the greens and the greens, or we can just keep everything separate and um, that way DC and DCC can be separated between them and hopefully I've got something that people really like and think is really cool.